the word rejoice is found 192 times in the Bible. And the word joy <coughs> is found 165 times. The expression be glad appears 36 times. Not only the word glad, but be glad. 36 times. <coughs> and this morning, I want to talk about this subject. About being glad, rejoice, always happy. Because this is the Christian's duty to be always cheerful, no matter what happens. You know, the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians, in that chapter, he mentions the word rejoicing many times. But in one Bible verse, which is Philippians 4.4, 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always. And again, and again I say, Rejoice. In the lives of the children of Israel, there were some occasions where they had special reason to rejoice. And that was in the time of the Feast of the Tabernacles. For seven days, they should go out from their houses in the forest or in any place, and they make little bowers with branches and decorate with flowers, with palm leaves, and they should stay there seven days rejoicing. But not only the head of the family should rejoice. Uh, open your Bibles together with me in Deuteronomy chapter 16. And we read verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 11. It says, And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou, thy son, thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gate, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name there. Who is left out here? <coughs> to rejoice. He said, you, your children, your visitors, your servants, and even the Levite, the priest, they should rejoice for seven days. Why they should rejoice? What was the reason of their rejoicing? Because this feast that lasted seven days occurred on the 15th day to the 22nd of the first month, uh, sorry, of the seventh month, of the seventh month. And uh, that was just five days after the Day of Atonement, which was on the 10th day of the seventh month. 
So five days after the Day of Atonement, there was a feast of joy for seven days. And they should rejoice. Uh, you can read this in the last verses of uh, Leviticus chapter 23. There you find out a description of the Feast of the Tabernacle. How they should go out and uh, spend those seven days. And that was because the Day of Atonement had passed. Their sins had been forgiven had been removed from the sanctuary and now it was a reason for great rejoicing. Another occasion when the children of Israel rejoiced was in the time of harvest at Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. And they rejoiced because of the bountiful blessing that God has bestowed upon them for the plentiful harvest that they have gathered in. Now, there are many reasons for us today to rejoice. I want to read a few Bible verses showing some reasons why we should rejoice. In Psalm chapter 20, verse 5, it says here, Psalms 20, verse 5, We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners, the Lord Fulfill all thy petitions. One point is mentioned here, the reason why we should rejoice. What is it? Salvation. Is it of a little importance to be saved? Or to be lost? And because we are saved, uh, the psalmist says that we will rejoice because we are saved. Now, let's not misunderstand this. We are saved of all our past sins, our past life. We are saved from that. When we accepted Jesus Christ, we are saved from that. But if we continue to the end, then what did Jesus say? He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So salvation is guaranteed from the part of God that there is no problem. If we are not saved, the only ones to be blamed is us. But salvation was provided, and salvation is certain for those that accept Jesus and continue to the end. Who should be especially rejoicing? Let's see another psalm that we have read already. Psalm 32, verse 11. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Who are the ones that should rejoice? Those that are righteous. Now, are we righteous? We can be righteous, accepting the righteousness of Jesus Christ that he offers us. 
when we confess our sins and forsake our sins, then He takes away our sins and puts upon us His righteousness and considers us righteous. Is that a reason for us to rejoice? Amen. If we have that experience? Amen. Definitely. A reason for rejoicing. And those that upright in heart, they should uh, shout for joy, it says here. In Psalm 71, verse 23, it says, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul, which thou hast redeemed. Here again, there is a, another reason mentioned why we should rejoice. Because we are redeemed. What is the meaning of the word redeem? Bought back. Purchased back. We were sold. But Jesus Christ bought us back. And that means he redeemed us. And those that are redeemed should utter these words of the psalm writer. My lips shall greatly rejoice because thou hast redeemed me. There is one interesting thought mentioned by Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 8. And notice the expression that he says. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them, in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. A man may live long, and rejoice in all his days. But what he should remember? That there will be the time of darkness. What is the meaning of this word darkness? I want to read a few statements about this darkness. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. 1 Peter 4, 12 to 16. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other means matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this behalf. The Apostle Peter here speaks.
speaks about some dark day. And he speaks about fiery trial. He says, this fire trial will try you, but rejoice. How can you rejoice in trial, in persecution, in suffering? He says, if any man suffer as a Christian, he should not be ashamed, he should rejoice. Who suffers in this world? Everybody. Everybody suffers. Some more, others less. Everybody has a cross to carry. But when we suffer, we should not suffer as a murderer or thief, or evildoer, or busybody. Now, what is a busybody? What is a busybody? A person that intervenes in somebody else's business. Or as we commonly say, he puts the nose where he, sh where he shouldn't. Nobody should suffer because he is a busybody in other men's matters. No one should suffer. No one should go to prison because he is an evildoer. He broke the law. But if he has seen evil days or dark days, suffering as a Christian because of the truth, Peter says, then you rejoice. One statement uh, from Selected Messages.